Now what didn't come with this originally was this power cord. The guys at Content and Verdon Organs were very helpful with that. I know this may have seemed like a problem in my last video, but they were super helpful in helping me find this part, um, being readily available on the email like 24 hours a day, uh, and then giving me instructions on what to do. So it was very easy to add this later, even though it was missing. It was a little frustrating at the beginning, but customer service was totally top notch. This finally came today, the, the power cable that I need. So we're gonna open it up and here it is. This is a USB to four pin Molex connector. This is uh, for computer fans. We've got our USB end, then our other end. Here's our connector. Plug it in, so that feels like it's in. The pins were in the wrong spot. You can see on here, this says five volts and 12 volts. So the pins came on the 12 volt side. So I had to take those out of the connector. I had them flipped at, at first and it didn't work. And then I flipped them around, plugged it in, and now we have a status light on. USB cable that's connected to that power input. I just have in an iPhone charger. I'm gonna use the wall charger rather than the computer one, just so I'm not drawing too much power off of my laptop, but that's the power situation. Pins are back in it and the connector's back on. Now they're in the correct spot. These are the extra connectors um, that actually pass through to this. There's a few pass-through connectors um, that go to some stuff I'm not using. If you had a computer, I think you could. So I'm just leaving those tucked in a corner right now. Um, these ribbon cables just go to the keyboards and toe studs and pedals and stuff. Um, then I've got a power strip in here that I plug all my other things that need electricity into. And then below that, I've got this, which is a flat plug extension cord. That goes to this, and I just plug that right into the wall so I can get this really close um, to the wall and not waste any space in this small room. I've actually used some of the extra packaging material, some of the scraps, I just cut them a little shorter. And these are my speaker stands. This is sort of an easy way to reuse materials. I set my speakers on top of these and then there's plenty of room for the cables to come out of the holes without the speaker sitting on top of them. Audio interface, power, players right side speaker power, organ power, players left side speaker power, and my computer charger so I can easily just flick this switch when I'm done. Some pretty basic cable management. Um, I want to leave myself enough room that if I need to change something I don't have to take this back cover off every time. Over here of course again the same extra scraps. And the last things to connect are the touchscreen monitors. I've got two, one on each side. I've got this one sitting on a box, so it matches the height of this one, which is conveniently sitting on top of the interface. Uh, I've got USB-C cables running to each of these that does video and power for the touchscreens. The one on the far side, I just have a little extension. Here's the computer power. Touchscreen for the right side. And then touchscreen for the left side, audio interface, a backup view of how all this stuff looks here in this room. So setting up the touch screens is pretty easy. Uh, the driver I use is called UPDD, I'll link that. We just tell it which devices are touch. You hold this blue circle, or hold the circle till it turns blue. And then those are calibrated. This is my left touch screen, this is my right touch screen, this is my main computer, and I've made sure to put the menu bar on it. And when you do this on Mac, each one of these that you click on will have a red outline on the physical monitor, so it's easy to know which is which. I'm using a new configuration, so I can show you what this would look like if you were doing it for the first time. Um, I leave this one on homemade or modified MIDI console. 
and then we'll enable MIDI output because mine has um, LEDs on the buttons. And then here we just want to select whatever interface we're using for in and out. Since I'm using a focus right, I'm going to click the checkbox for in and the checkbox for MIDI out. Now I'll do the audio interface for the audio output device. Since I have a three manual instrument, I'm going to load up a three manual sample set so I can show you what that will look like. So I'll do con. Okay, and again for now, I'm going to leave this all the same and I'll go ahead and speed this part up so you don't have to watch this. Uh, we'll pull up this window. Um, so I'll click two. And this opens up a separate window. And since I've already arranged my monitors, I'm just going to click the handle for this and drag it down to this touch screen and do the same thing for the other one. Go to View, Console Window 3, and I'll drag this one over to my alternate screen. Just click Left Jam. If I want this to be the right stop jam, I'll just push Right Jam, and then it changes to that. And then when I push Full Screen on the main window, they'll all change to full screen with it. So now I've got the big view. I find these a little bit hard to read for most sample sets. So what I prefer on all of them is the simple jam. And then this is just duplicated on both screens. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just couple the keyboards to the software. I've already set up the MIDI interface or the audio interface to accept the MIDI. So now all I have to do is just touch them and make sure everything works. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is the auto detect. So I'll use the third manual, the highest manual, touch the lowest key, touch the highest key, and then that one's done. And then this is a really nice, easy graphical way to do all. So here's the second manual, and then the lowest manual. Same thing, lowest key, then highest key. And click done. Okay, so here I'll do the pedal board. Again, just auto detect lowest key, highest key, and yes, this sample set doesn't have as many notes as mine does, but it doesn't matter, it won't, it won't play them. And then I'll auto detect this, and it just wants you to rock it up and down, and it'll find um, where the low point is and where the high point is. The main thing is you just set it wherever it's currently at. The next thing we do, the general pistons and the sequencer controls. You can do auto detect, um, but we wanna make sure that the output goes to the lamp. So it's easiest just to pull up this menu. My cancel is already lit up. That's just kind of by default. Uh, so we'll do the rest of these. So next I'll do the setter, auto detect, push set, now it knows, and send matching. Then I'll just go through the list. This console has a button for each one of these digits, the 100s, the 10s, and the 1s. So I'll do those two, as well as the sequencer. So here's the 100 minus. One hundred plus. Ten minus. 10 plus. So now we're going to set the trigger minus and plus, which is the sequencer control. So I'll do these on the console first, uh, the thumb buttons first, that is. Here's the forward. And then since I have these doubled, duplicated on the feet, I'll do input two and auto detect for what I've got on the feet. So this is sequencer forward and then sequencer backward. And now those are set and they will be the same control for the thumb and the feet. And then now these are essentially the, the generals on this console. These buttons, they're labeled zero through nine. Um, and I'm gonna switch back to primary input here. So trigger zero, and I'm just gonna go across. These will have a controller for the lamp. One, two, three, etc. And you just 
do this the first time, you'll only have to do this once. It does seem um, a little laborious, but this only has to be done once because the software will save the settings for the next times you're doing it. Eight and one more. Okay, and those are all the buttons that I have on here that I'm going to use right now. I do have two additional toast studs, but those are for a different project. So right now I've got all the buttons set, I've got all the keyboards set, and I've got the pedal board set, and I've got an expression pedal set. So I'm basically done and ready to start playing. Hi.